In Creo Parametric, you can import ECAD data into a Creo Parametric model using the IDF format. And ECAD, if you're not aware, that is for electrical computer aided design and IDF stands for the intermediate data format. It is an older format. It comes in a bunch of different versions. There's 2.0, 3.0, the latest is 4.0. Creo Parametric can read 2.0 and 3.0, but IDF is kind of outdated. There's a newer format called IDX, which stands for the Incremental Data Exchange. But if you're using Cadence, ORCAD, Zucan, Altium, Mentor Graphics, you still may be receiving IDF files. So let's take a look at how to import them. Here I am in an assembly model and I want to import some IDF data into my board assembly. So I will select it and then choose activate from the mini toolbar to bring the data in. I will click on the get data overflow menu. Here is the import command. And right now in my working directory, I have a bunch of .emn files and an emn file well that is the electrical neutral data i don't know what the m stands for but the emn files will contain the pcb outlines it'll have positions of parts and holes and also keep out and keep in areas and the one that i want to bring in is this one over here before I hit the import button, I just want to show you what one of these files looks like. So this is the .emn file that I am bringing in. You can see that it is a text file and it's got information about the different components and their positions and whether they're on the top side of the board or the bottom side of the board. So this is what we are going to bring in. Let's go back to Creo Parametric. Okay, so now let's click on the import button. And we get a dialog box that opens up. Here at the top we have a drop down list where we can specify the reference coordinate system for locating the components on the board. If you take a look in the model tree, here we have the ECAD comp coordinate system. If you had more than one coordinate system, you would be able to select it from the drop down list. Here we have a list of the different components. It gives their name and the reference designator. And here we have get from, which means that it is going to create new components for these using the default coordinate system. Then we have a, another field here for the library file. In the library file, when we click on the browse button, this allows us to select a .emp file. Previously, we opened up the .emn, that is the neutral file. Now we're opening up the profile file, the .emp file, and this gives the outline and the height. Let's take a look at what that .emp file looks like. So here is an EMP file. Again, it is a text file and it gives the information for the outline and the height. Let's go back to Creo Parametric. So I've got an EMP file selected. Let's click on the import button. And now we have some other different options down here. I'll cover some of these options in a later video, but we are ready to bring in the geometry. Let's click the OK button. And now it is opening up a window for the component that it's going to bring in. And it wants to know what coordinate system that we want to use from this particular model. There is a coordinate system called ECAD default, and this is what comes in the default templates that PTC provides for creating new ECAD components. So I will select the coordinate system, then it goes to the next component, I need to select the coordinate system. And so let's do this a bunch of times. Yeah, the, using this is a bit tedious, but in a moment I will show you how to improve the process. So here we have the components brought in onto the board and you can see that they're just represented by rectangles or basically cylinders and not really what I want. Again, this gives me sort of like the outline of the components. A lot of times you will already have components that you want to use instead of these. And so I am going to 
make some changes here so that I can automate the process. And instead of creating these gray blocks or cylinders, I'm going to make it so that it will retrieve Creo parametric components. So the first thing, let's close out of here and then erase our content from session. Let's erase not displayed. And to show you an example of one of those components, let's open up a capacitor. And here you can see it. It's nice. It's got some colors. It's got a little bit more uh, geometry than just a gray cylinder. And it also has a coordinate system in here called EC underscore def. And that's the default coordinate system. So rather than having Creo Parametric ask me, hey, what coordinate system do you want to use? I can use config.pro options to automate that information. Let's do that. Let's go to file and then options and options. And I'll go to the configuration editor. Now let's take a look at some config.pro options. I'll click on the find button and I'm going to use ecad underscore to search on and then click find now. I'm not using just ecad because there are a bunch of options that start with ecad without the underscore and this will just make it a little easier for me. So first off, let's make the name column a bit wider. The first option that I'm going to set is the ecad board coordinate system default name. So what coordinate system do I want to use from the board? Well, let's set that value. I knew that in my board, maybe I'm always going to use a coordinate system called ecad underscore comp. And the next one that I'm going to set is for the components that I'm going to bring in. What is the coordinate system I want to use from there? And that one is going to be called EC underscore DEF. Let's set that one. And then another option that we are going to set. Let me scroll down in the list. We're looking for one called ECAD mapping file. And the mapping file gives information about, hey, if the IDF file says to use some certain component, what do I want to use on the Creo parametric file? And so let me click on the browse button. And in my working directory, here I have a file called ecad underscore hint dot map. This is the mapping file. Let's select it. And let me show you what that file looks like. So once again, it is a text file. You can see in the notes up at the top, it says that this is a template for it. And so it says, okay, if the ecad name is this, then this is what the MCAD part should be used. And so for example, for the second one, you can see that we have one name in ECAD at CC1210, but on the MCAD side, the Creo parametric side, it wants to use a model called RES, I assume that's resistor 150. And so that's what your mapping file looks like. Let's go back to Creo parametric. And so we've got that set. There's one other option that I want to show you, and it is called ECAD create hint add. And the default value for this is yes. This assists in the creation of an ECAD hint.map file, which will automatically rename components if necessary each time a library of component outlines is imported. So again, the default value for that one is yes. Let's click on the add change button and then close out of here. Let me scroll down in the list and here are the different options in my config.profile. Now one thing to be aware of, these options have the little lightning symbol. That indicates that the option should take effect immediately. What you'll find is that's not always the case. And so I'm going to export my file so that I have these settings retained. Let's click the OK button and then OK out of here. And now I'm going to exit out of Creo Parametric and restart. Just to make sure that that mapping file option takes effect. Okay, I have restarted Creo Parametric. Let's activate our board assembly where I want the different components to end up. And now I will go to Get Data and then Import. And let's select our .emn file. Click the import button and 
Let's bring the window to the center. And so this time you'll notice that it says, okay, we have the different components and now get from says exist. That's because we're using that mapping file that says, okay, for these components, which Creole parametric models should I use? You'll also notice that it has the coordinate system listed in here and we don't need to import a .emp file because we're using actual CAD models. So this is good. Let's click the OK button. And now, let me turn off the coordinate system display for a moment. You can see that we're using real actual Creo parametric models as opposed to having all just gray blocks. Yeah, some of the parts are gray blocks, but you'll notice that some of the resistors and capacitors and the relays look better than just having that default imported geometry. So that is the way that you can bring in an IDF file into Creo Parametric for your electrical CAD data. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.